Morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks to all of you that were having pizza with us yesterday at the Supercars lot. Um, so I wanted to spend a few minutes today before you guys are off to your next networking break talking a bit about design, but not in the physical space, rather design of the employee experience. You heard Jason mention my title, I'm the chief people officer at a fast casual pizza chain based in DC called Ann Pizza. Um, and I also have this kind of unique mashup of work where I lead the development team for the business as well. So lead the teams that are uh, responsible for growing the people pipeline, and then also those responsible for growing the physical space pipeline of the brand. Uh, and I think one of the things that's interesting about that is it's, there's a lot of time and energy put into the physical space through the, through the lens of what does the customer want. A lot of what Aaron just shared with us actually is, are great insights about what the customer's looking for in the five senses of merchandising. Today, we're gonna to talk about how do you actually create a place where your employees are at their best most often so that there's a reason to go into the space. Quick show of hands, how many of you are wrestling with the economics of third-party delivery in your business? How many of you are too tired of it to raise your hand? Yeah, I looked, at the, I looked at the agenda for the week and saw a bunch of workshops related to the economics of that, the physical space design considerations of that. Today, we're actually gonna talk a little bit about the opposite, which is in a future state where off-premise occasions are so proliferated in the business, how do you create a scenario where someone actually has a reason to go into the shop? And that starts with creating a reason for employees to go into the shop. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with Ant Pizza, a very brief overview, and that is, um, it is Ant Pizza, not Ampersand Pizza. Um, the and being a key for the purpose of the company, which is a symbol that represents connectivity, represents unity, represents inclusivity. It's, it's everything that we stand for. Um, much like other uh, concepts, like I would argue, I don't know how Aaron feels about this characterization, but Starbird essentially being a proof of concept for a lot of other things related to the food industry. For us, and pizza, the pizza part of it is essentially a concept proof for the purpose part of it, which is building a brand exclusively around purpose-driven values. And as an HR leader, by the way, there are a lot of people paying lip service to culture and purpose. Uh, but I'm proud to work with a team and a brand that I think takes that to heart and puts it at the center of the design thinking that we apply, not just to the space, but to the employee experience. And pizza for us is that unifying vehicle. Uh, it's light, it's playful, it gives people a chance to connect to both the tribe, which is our term for our team in our shops, and the causes that we support. So I thought I'd show you a few things here about our physical space but then talk about it through the lens of what that means for our tribe. Uh, so if any of you have ever been into our pizza shops before, you'll notice that they look basically the opposite of the entire presentation you just saw, where there's not color. Everything is very high contrast black and white. The tribe in our shops are dressed similarly to the way that you see me today, and those of us in support roles for the organization are dressed that same way as well. The idea being that in these sort of arresting, physically beautiful spaces, you can create a canvas and a backdrop where the personality of the food and of the tribe can shine through. Now, you might be thinking that sounds lofty, that sounds a little too esoteric for me, but it kind of boils down to a truth that I live by as an HR leader by trade, which is that the guest experience is never going to exceed the employee experience. So the very best thing you can hope for, I mean, just step back for a moment as development professionals. The very best thing you can hope for after you put 500,000, a million, two million dollars of capital into a physical space, make something beautiful, is that your people show up and literally give everything they have to the paying customer. They're not gonna give anything more than that. And so for me, the design challenge is how do you create a space where on that backdrop, not only is the food beautiful? I feel like I need at least some shameless plug of, plug of our pizza if you guys got a chance to eat some of it yesterday. But also a place where that food can become playful. Some interesting shots of our pies here which don't seem as traditional as what you guys might be used to seeing with other pizza. But also an opportunity for 
the personality of the people in the shop to shine through. Now, these are actual tribe members for us, our, our, our term for our employees. And what you'll notice is hair, tattoos, personality, all of that coming through. Now, that's a part of the culture of Ann Pizza in the physical vibe of the space, not because we're trying to be some cool brand, even though as I approach 40 years old and dress like this, my son might tell me I'm trying too hard, but because that's when people feel at their best. If they don't have to cover up the tattoo, if they don't have to change the hair color, if they don't have to shift the way they dress, they're gonna have more to give to the guest and more of that can spill across the counter. So a quick recap of this as it relates to what we'll talk about here, and I'll give you a couple of quick case studies. For us, that purpose, a belief, a way of living about connectivity, about unity, and the purpose of doing that through pizza, we have sort of four core values as a brand. And the first one is what I'm gonna talk about today, which is how focusing on letting the design and vibe of the space let individual oneness come to life and how that will create a unique and memorable experience. I'm gonna make a prediction, and if I'm lucky enough, Jason and, and, um, and Michael and everybody else to be invited back a few years from now, we will be here five years from now talking about how most of the business we do as restaurant professionals is off-premise and that the vast majority of the experiences in shop are driven by something much greater than just the food. And, and maybe that's because I work in the pizza business and know that most pizza today is consumed outside of the pizza shop, that you have to go above and beyond if you're going to create some compelling reason. You have to be intentional about creating that experience in shop if somebody is going to choose that over a far more convenient way of getting your product. So, Breaking down celebrating oneness, we operate internally as a team at Ant Pizza on sort of a few underlying beliefs related to creating and curating that. The first, which I mentioned earlier, the guest experience will never exceed the tribe experience. The second being that the tribe experience begins with how they feel at their work and in their space. The third being that the work experience should exist by design not by default. As a brand that takes a ton of time to meticulously curate every detail about our physical space, I think it would be a betrayal to our tribe if we did not do the same thing with them and with their work experience. And last, and I think actually that I'm, I'm pretty sure Nathaniel when he speaks later today will talk about this in his talk, that if you're going to scale intimacy, which is something Sweet Green's been putting a lot of time and energy behind, it's something that we find very important too, that oneness is the great enabler to that. If you're going to create one-to-one -one interactions with people where there is a meaningful connection, you must let them be themselves at work. And so this is why we do what we do as a brand. Why all black? It's a display of our oneness solidarity, but also an opportunity for people to express that flair and swagger with their own style. Music, Aaron talked a little bit about this. Much like the Yard House example, Ant Pizza's music is fully curated, but it's not curated by somebody in a glass tower or in an ivory office somewhere. It's actually curated by the tribe. They control the music in their shop. Why? Because we want them to be at their best most often in the shop. I will tell you it comes with guest complaints. <laughs> but five years from now, if those people still love our pizza, they have many other avenues to get that pizza besides coming into the shop. We wanna make darn sure that anybody who walks into the shop is getting an experience where that tribe is at their best because they are vibing in a way that makes sense to them. From a design standpoint, we wanna create an atmosphere where tribe feel at home as often as possible and where each shop has a name and a story and a history that's unique and reflects the neighborhood and the values. And one of the case studies I'll walk you through briefly here today to give you a, a kind of a snapshot of how involving the tribe in something can, can lead to truly innovative solutions. Not that text only is innovative here, but to share you a little bit about how the efficiency of communication with our tribe through text messaging has created really a powerhouse of internal communication that breaks down some of the barriers that we're used to seeing when messages get diluted. How many of you, by the way, have seen a message that starts pretty clean at corporate but may not get executed perfectly at the shop at the end of the day? 
few of you are lying here. You just love to believe that everything you create is perfectly executed. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of these examples here in the short time that we have. First, uniforms. If you want somebody to feel great and you want them to look great, ask them what they want to wear. Not with a case study managed by your merchandising team to figure out how you can value engineer the fabric out of your uniform, but ask them what they want to wear. So we did. We asked our tribe. They said, hey, there's this really cool upstart clothing manufacturer in DC called EAT. We're going to work with them to create a uniform that's a collaboration where EAT's going to get some free press on our tribe and our shops. Our tribe are going to wear something that they're already choosing to wear outside of work anyway. By the way, I have heard that at a conference before. Somebody stand up and talk about how they made a uniform that somebody wanted to wear outside of work. I would argue most of the time that's complete bogus BS. In this case, our folks actually wanted to wear this outside the shop, and our tribe took pride in what they had been a part of creating. When it comes to communications, we created an opportunity for people to interact one-on-one -on -one with the brand voice of the company. Another thing that happens is brands scale. They lose that intimacy. When they have an interaction with a guest service representative, very clerical, maybe even robotic, maybe even driven by AI. In our case, if you text us, you will get a response from us. There is a live person on the other end of our text line 24-7. They will respond to you sometimes when you text them by mistake. For example, on Valentine's Day, we did a promotion with a bunch of missed connections at our shops where people tend to text us thinking that we were their Thursday night plans. And notice, you're not actually getting a robotic response here. This is the pizza plug. This is our brand voice responding to a customer in an authentic way and creating a shareable moment. I did my best to scratch that out, so hopefully that's okay. <clears throat> the other thing that we did, we asked our tribe how they wanted to be communicated with, and you know what they said? They said, we listen to a lot of podcasts when we're on the bus or on the, on the train to and from work, so now we disseminate information via a podcast hosted by our tribe curated content from our tribe, and we have a ton of uptake in people actually listening to important community and business information that we didn't before. And then we took it so far as to actually curate the messaging that's on each of our emails. If you guys have ever seen an email from me before, you'll notice that my email signature changes quarterly, that the brand changes and evolves over time, and that the pop culture references and the anti-establishment references of the brand evolve with the tribe's tastes and preferences. If any of you don't know what the reference of glowed up or big drip mean, can't help you. It was done for our tribe. And you know, when, when we look at the brand overall, we look at a, a situation where if we're going to create something special, if we're going to create something that's unique, every part and every touch point of the brand, every partnership that we have with the brand, every artist that comes into our shops, every collaboration we choose to do, like this one with a community outreach organization in DC, or this one which just opened in Harvard Square up in Cambridge, Massachusetts in partnership with Milk Bar, all of these things come from engaging our tribe, getting them involved and creating a space where they feel at their best more often and can deliver a unique set of circumstances and experiences for customers. So what's the payoff? Well, at the end of the day, it, it creates unity. It creates this scenario where people are truly in it together for the long haul. You guys might know a little bit about us. There's a several employees uh, and former employees who have gone so far as to take that symbol of purpose and actually get a tattoo of it, which we pay for, by the way, if they want it. Not required either, I don't have one. Uh, but purely optional if it helps them feel in touch with the purpose and at their best more often. And the real payoff then is that people notice. And the reason to do all this stuff is not just to feel good, but to actually drive a unique set of circumstances that customers can experience only in your shop and only because the tribe has been set up in a way that they can feel at their best 
as often as possible. And a really kind of interesting parting thought for you is with all the design that you put into your shops and all the intentionality that you use in your physical space, is there an option for you in your business to take that same intentionality and apply it to your tribe's experience? Because we have found at Ann Pizza that when we do that, we're able to create things that we would have never been able to create on our own because of their involvement and their engagement in the process. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, appreciated being here. And in the event any of you want or have any questions, I threw my contact information up there briefly since I know we're running off to something else, Jason. So thank you again. Thank you, Andy. Awesome insights. Thank you so much.